Welcome to the Australian Property Investment Podcast with your host, Aaron Christie David. Each episode, we ask an expert to share their key insights for aspiring investors to make confident property choices. G'day, everyone. Welcome back to another uh, episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast, where we're all about helping investors and home buyers make better property decisions. Uh, today, I'm joined by Jack Corbett from Corbett Property Buyers. Um, I, I know you as a, as a great friend, Jack, and uh, on a personal note, Jack was part of our success recently to buy our own home, which uh, is a wonderful milestone. I guess I want that same feeling for a lot of other property buyers, whether they're home buyers, whether they're investors, for example. To go into, I think predominantly people come into home buying as a very stressful experience. They come in the condition to think that way, right? And uh, I think a, a buyer's agent is the ultimate insurance policy to not have a stressful experience. And, Definitely. Uh, and I think it's part of the dream team that you talk about. So when we get the right team, we're talking about conveyances, we're talking about mortgage brokers, we're talking about uh, the right real estate agent partner to be on board, but also the buyer's agent is probably one of those hidden gems and people think they're kind of for the top end of town, but I'm here to kind of bust that myth to say they're not. They're here for everyday Australians as well, isn't it, Jack? So welcome, Jack. Thank you, man. Yeah. First off, thanks for having me. It's, um, Absolute pleasure. And um, it's uh, yeah, good to good to help you out with your property too, which is Thank really you, good. So good, good little success story. Thanks, man. And we'll kind of touch on that. We're we'll touching on our own journey and how we worked, and I guess how we got the best out of you, but also maybe how you got the best out of us as well. So it's kind of a real life case study that we've got. Um, but I guess for those people that are listening that don't really understand or a little bit unsure about exactly what a buyer's agent is, fill us in. For sure. So I guess the best way to to explain what a buyer's agent is it's it's having someone in your corner. And most importantly, like when you get a really good buyer's agent, you've got someone in this competitive market looking at property for you 24 seven. Yeah. And, and speed is everything in this market. As you know, it's so competitive. Um, so having someone, you know, organizing all of your due diligence, chasing up the agents for upcoming properties, big thing is obviously negotiating the sale. Mm. And there's so much strategy around, you know, putting offers forward at the moment. So, it's like, I guess, having a bit of an unfair advantage yep, spot on. in a competitive market, which is just, you know, we get some really good results for our buyers. Spot on. It then leads to the question, which is, well, in a rising market, every property is going to go to market, isn't it? And so what's a buyer's agent going to do in terms of getting me off market listings when everything's being listed, for example? So what's, what's your kind of... Definitely. So I, I, I believe, well, I guess what's happening right now is off market opportunities are, are getting slimmer. That's yep. for sure. But that's not to say that there isn't off-market opportunities. And it's also too, that's that's such a, I guess, it is a big part of our business, but it's not the only part of our business too. Right. So especially in a rising market too, sometimes you actually need the property to go to market because you've got vendors with expectations that are really high. Interesting. And you've also, we help out not just in off-market scenarios, but we put you in the best position to actually secure the property even when it's on market. So whether that's by private treaty, auction, mm. you know, we can help out in so many ways to make sure that you do get the property when it is on the market yeah. and for the best price as well. And I guess we talked, you mentioned before about being the unfair advantage, right? And I guess, yeah, I, I see it because I'm privy to it and I see because I see people that are buying property consistently and daily and I find the buyer's agent is the unfair advantage. I'll give you an example. We had one, it was in the inner west in, in Sydney, um, the real estate agent knew the buyer's agent was able to get them in to do a Perfect. building uh, inspection because they want to do some renovation work. Whereas another buyer got told because had two clients go for the same property. Oh wow! The other client got told, "No, no, we can't. You can't get access to the property." But I knew the buyer's agent got in the day before, and I'm like, "That's what a buyer's agent does. It's 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 relationships." Whereas I might buy a property once and through the through the real estate agent, it's what I call retail. But you're a bit wholesale, right? Because you will deal with those agents consistently, particularly because you niche in areas. So talk me through um, how much does relationships matter in real estate? Matter, I think it comes back to life, right? Like, you, like life, like it's it's you you leverage those relationships. Yeah, um, you're dealing with these people every day, and and if you're pleasant, then you know those agents will help you out as well. So, yeah. you know, we do we, we're talking to these agents every day. You know, we're friendly with them, and they do in turn help us out, which actually helps them as well because they know they're dealing with serious buyers. Yeah. And it's only going to help their business as well. And everyone's so busy at the moment. When you deal with a buyer's agent, it's actually an easier transaction. 
and and as agents, like I think they really appreciate that as well. Yeah, because I guess you've got to the point that you're going to be working with someone that has probably has their finance in order. They've got a brief. Look, they look at what, what they want to buy, where they want to buy, how much they want to spend, for example. So I guess you've done a little bit of that vetting. That's it. So like we give agents confidence, like we won't even bring anyone through a property until they've got their finance approved, you know, just in case we have to act. So that's one of the prerequisites, I guess, for for working with us. Um, if someone doesn't have their finance yet, obviously they're, they're going straight to you to get their, (laughs) get their or get all that in order. Um, and that's, yeah. So I think it gives agents a lot of confidence knowing that, okay, there's a good chance that these people are going to like the property Mm -hmm. because we've done all of the work before we even got there. Yeah. And then it's going to hopefully be a smooth transaction for them when we do get to an agreed price. Yeah, great. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, you've had a great background, right? Because you've been on the other side of the fence, which is a real estate agent <laughs> in a great agency and then coming across to being a buyer's agent. So I guess what has been some of the knowledge that you've taken from being a real estate agent to now being a buyer's agent and how can people kind of pick your brain right here, right now? I had a, I was really lucky. I had a very good apprenticeship in sales yeah. <laughs> before I was a buyer's agent. And that helps a lot with getting offers across the line, dealing with agents, and, yeah. and once again, having those relationships. A lot of these guys that we're buying off, I either used to work with or I've known for a long time, which does help. Like, you know, when, when trust is high, business is easy. Yeah, it's better. And, and having those relationships with those agents is, is really helpful. Um, what that means for our buyers is I'm always thinking not so much about what the vendor wants, but what's in it for the agent as well. Yeah. And we're sort of, you know, we're structuring our offers, we're timing our offers around that as well. And it's not so much just about what the vendor wants in terms of price, but how can we make the agent's life easier? And being in that position myself, it's a really good way to, you know, just improve your chances of getting your offer across the line, yeah. if that makes yeah. sense. It absolutely yeah. makes sense. Um, I guess in a market like we've got at the moment where a lot of properties are going to auction and agents are happy to take it to auction. So there's kind of two parts to this question. One is what would make an agent, in your opinion, consider a pre, pre-auction pre offer? And then we'll talk about auction in a minute. For sure. So you've got to be really strategic, I guess, with your pre-auction offers at the moment too yeah. because obviously it's a very hot market. Um, hand over heart, like, you're probably going to get a better price at auction, you know, if you've got five, six, ten people then you're know, registered coming on the Saturday. Yeah. Um, but for us, we're really strategic around when we, you know, when we place those pre-auction offers as well. If you do it too late in the campaign, they're more likely to just say, oh, look, you know, don't worry about it. We'll see you on Saturday. Yeah. Um, if it's too early, sometimes, you know, maybe before it's even online and it's an, there's an auction campaign booked in, right. you've got to consider that the agents probably sold them on that process and what they're seeing in the news as well is that, you know, people are getting really good prices via auction. So it's a bit of a dance in terms yeah. of timing it in the, correctly and then also, I guess, presenting your offer or maybe even using your offer as leverage to say, well, look, we're not going to be at auction, you know, if you guys don't look at this offer as well. So you've yeah. really got to put that decision back on the owners and like I said, it all comes down to strategy, really. Yeah. Like you, you wouldn't make a pre-auction offer on the Friday. Chances are the agent's going to, you know, shop it around on the Saturday. Is there's a lot of the lot that goes into a pre-auction offer, yeah. and you've got to be a hundred percent, you're almost a hundred percent sure that they're going to take it before you even do it. And that then almost begs the question: Is are we overpaying for the sake of taking this property off the market as Correct. well? Right? Yeah, is definitely. That where you just come in going, you've got your research, you've got a hard line number going. Well, in your professional opinion. You really can't go above this. Like, where do you come into it going? Definitely. High emotions, <laughs> want the property. Yep. Yep. So that's a, it's a, it's a, once again, a bit of a dance, right? Like you, we as buyers agents have got to have this, I guess, I call it pulling up the handbrake. And I, and I do this quite often in terms of guys, any point past this figure, we're overpaying. Yeah. I don't have enough evidence. I don't have enough, you know, I'm not hearing enough around here that we can't su- support this price. Yeah. Um, so we've got to, it's looking at realestate.com is old news now. Um, yeah. and to take your, like your purchase, for example, yeah. I was calling agents on the way to the auction, right? To sort of get some real time feedback. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's not what's sold. It's sort of like, okay, cool. Where's this property up to? Where's this competing property up to? Right. Okay. We've got offers at this much. Okay, cool. So right up until, you know, 10 minutes before the auction, we're getting real time feedback on what's happening in the market. Yeah. And then that way you can sort of give your your 
buyer's confidence when they do put that figure down yeah. that, you know, it's, it's competitive, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Perfect. Let's go to the exciting part, which is auction, right? <laughs> and, um, and for those that are, that are listening, um, we recently bought our family home through Jack at an auction. Um, Jack's professional advice was not to stand near you. Um, I never took his advice. Uh, I'll put on record that I'm probably the worst client ever and we're standing right next to you, which in hindsight was probably not great for you and not great for us. Right. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about going to auction and being prepared to go to auction. Okay. And then we'll talk about what happens at auction and afterwards. So going to auction, what are you, what are you doing to prep buyers in the lead up to that? Definitely. So first, first and foremost, like it's, it's okay, cool. Why are we going to auction? You know, are we, are we, is there a chance that we need to substantiate the price because we're unsure because the yeah. property might be unique? Sure. Um, my, I guess at the moment in this hot and rising market is, well, let's do everything we can to secure pre-mark, pre-auction. And the reasoning behind that is, even the vendors don't know what they're going to get. There's a lot of motion, emotion involved. And, and I feel like buyers at the moment aren't thinking about comparables. They're thinking there's a real scarcity mindset and it's let's get it. Let's keep pushing. Let's just keep going because the next one's going to be more expensive. Yeah. So, so that first section is okay. Well, why are we going to auction? And if we are going to auction, it's because one, we're unsure of the price and two, maybe we need that you know, sort of, I guess, social proof around the pricing too to make yeah. sure that, you know, we're not overpaying as well. Yeah. Um, in terms of prep, obviously it's, it's finance deposit ready. Um, there's a form that we need to sign to obviously an authority to bid form. So I can yeah. bid on behalf of those buyers. And in probably about the day before we sort of break down sort of three prices. Well, what's a steal? What's a fair price? And then what's our max price? Yeah. Now this is the, the max price is is non-negotiable on the auction floor. The reason we do that is we don't want to get caught up in the emo- in the emotion of the auction because that's when we start thinking crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we want to lock that price in and that's that price is pretty much well if it goes for a dollar more you're happy to walk away and I, and I have that conversation early because like mm-hmm. I said we don't want to be having that on the auction floor. Yeah. Because we, the worst thing that can happen is, you know, buyer remorse. Yes, you got the property, but you paid forty thousand dollars more than oh, what you were sure. thinking, and and that's what I'm here to sort of, you know, get people to think logically, take the stress off. As you said before, I actually prefer my buyers to be around the corner, yeah, because that way it just takes all of the emotion out, the stress is out, and usually I'm either coming back saying yes, we've got it, or at the moment, sorry, it went for a hundred grand over. Don't worry about it. Let's keep looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I guess it's an auction, right? And I, I recommend for anyone that's looking to go to as many auctions before hand as possible. I think Definitely. for us, it's too close to home. We did, and we kind of delegated that to you. Um, so we got to the point here for us in auctions, and uh, it's physiologically. I think that's, that's the part that a lot of people underestimate. They go there financially ready, yep. but physiologically it takes over. I mean, you probably see as the blood drains out of our face, Definitely. the heart rate is it's pumping. For example, the auctioneer's got up and he's 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 <laughs> he's, he's, um, he's amping everyone up. You can up. feel that. You can feel the intenseness, like in, in the, the air. air. Yeah, right? definitely, it, it changes you. Yeah. It does, right? And everyone's yep. got their game face on. Some people are more laid back. Some people got their poker face on, and then there's just intensity because it's like. It gets thick very quick. Yeah. Um, so talk me through what's your, without kind of letting all the, the, yeah, 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 the, the secrets out. What is your ideal way to like open the bidding, make an offer and try and I guess take that heat out of the auction as well? Definitely. So, so the whole idea around an auction or the psychology around the auction is, is playing on your fears of missing out. Yeah. Everyone feels like, Oh, if I don't put my hand up, I'm going to miss out. And, and I sort of call it, um, adding fuel to the fire. Yeah. So. The more people that add the wood to the fire, usually the taller the flame <laughs> and the higher the price. So for anyone bidding at auction, it's for me, when I first start bidding, I always tell myself, just breathe because mm. you can't help but get caught up in the emotion and, and the intenseness. Yeah. So for anyone, as silly as it sounds, just take a breath yeah. <laughs> and, and breathe and have a plan before you get there. Um, typically, I've actually got my... Uh, 
top level number written down in my hand just in case. I'm sure I, to like wipe off with the sweat with it. Sure. Pretty much, yeah, <laughs> most times, yeah, definitely. And and I've got that number on there just to make sure that if I have a brain spasm mid-auction, I know what I'm going to pull out at. Yeah, nice. Um, I always say we want to disrupt the bidding as much as possible and, and more importantly, slow down the bidding. So don't feel like there's this pressure to to come back if, you know, if someone's bid higher than you straight away. Take a breath, slow it down, count to five, because the more time, in my experience, people have to think, the less likely they are to spend more money as well. And that's that's your competitors. So it's not against you and the agent, it's actually against you and the other buyers. Yeah. And for, for me, I always like to start first, and that way the auctioneer typically comes back to you as well. Yeah, um, nice. And I always Which like to... Which is what we call it, like you don't want to be the counter bidder. Right? Correct. We're always seeing one one controlling it. Yeah, definitely. And, and agents will tell you this too, like it's whether or not it's for their benefit or not. But if you're the highest bidder and it doesn't reach reserve, typically they'll go to you to negotiate first as well. Right. Um, but that's probably another strategy for another day. Yeah. I, I always like to start, uh, the, the bidding increments not as low as I can, but I want to start at a reasonable number because in this market, we're going to get there anyway. Mm. But I also, I don't start at like an even number either. So for me, I want people to, the, the auctioneer is going to want people to bid in, you know, 30, 50, 100 yeah. grand increments. I would rather people bid in 10 increments because what typically happens is, is we call it bidder fatigue. So the more you're bidding, the more your brain actually starts to go, oh, is this ever going to stop? This guy's going to keep going. So instead of, you know, that there's a couple of people out there that, that like to, you know, just bid really strongly, you know, yeah, 50, like the water. Yeah, yeah. 50 grand increments straight away. I, for example, if you were going to start at 1.4, I would probably start at 1.39, knowing that the most likely next bid is going to be 1.4. Nice. Instantly, we're going in 10s instead of 50s. They'll probably call for more, but yeah. the likelihood of us going up in 50s so we're going to get more bids in to get to probably to the same price, which will hopefully in turn wear people out. Yeah, great. And increment wise, like I mean, it's it's different on the price point, but how how do you then time those increments to drop and peg it down as, as definitely? As well? Yeah. So you don't want to go too low if that makes yeah. sense, because if you're bidding in one thousand dollar increments, which is someone's you know some people's strategies, sometimes that can signal to the other buyers and, and the auctioneer will call me out on it as well. Agree, so yeah. if I start going from 10s, 5s to 1s, yeah, it actually indicates that you're running out of money. So the whole trick to an auction, and I've seen people turn up in like Ferrari jackets. Like, <laughs> to and this of, is it. Yeah. The, I call it the theatre of auction. Correct. Oh, yeah. mate, it's, a, it's the theatre. I mean, I'll give a, take ours as an example. We turn up, I think my parents came along, yep. which could signal people that have got family money. Yeah. Um, then I've got a buyer's agent and then my buyer's agent knows the auctioneer, knows the real estate agent's like, we talk about this unfair advantage. I'm like, the theatre off this is becoming that's like, it. we're here to win. That's exactly right. And, and I think for, for anyone bidding, like just give off the illusion. If you're five grand away from your limit, do not let that show on your face. Mm. You know, I won a couple of auctions recently when we were literally a thousand bucks away from our limit yeah, and, right. and you just cannot show it. So, you know, don't don't slow your increment when it, when it does get to the pointy end of the auction. Slowing your increments down, or, or sorry, reducing your increments shows that you are you know running out of money. So have a limit. Yeah. Doesn't matter how quickly you get there, as long as the other buyers think that you're going to keep going, and and you and you give off that sort of vibe, I guess, that yeah. you're going to keep going. And 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 you know, the, the best thing that happens for me is when we buy a property under budget. And the underbidder comes up to me and says, you're going to keep going, won't you? <laughs> that's that's the exact impression that you want to give off yeah. on the auction floor. Yeah, it's, uh, I just, it's, it's, and it's a spectator sport. Like you got half a neighborhood that turns up. It's, uh, it's something else. Man. It's not for the faint-hearted. I'm glad you the, do that. The so, pressure is on. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you do that for a fee. And kind of talking about fees, um, let's talk openly about fees, for example. For sure. You're paid Flat fee percentage, how do you operate as a buyer's agent? Definitely. So I like to give people the option. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a really small retainer paid up front, which is an engagement fee. Yep, so skim uh, the game. Yep, yeah. definitely, yeah. That you know that weeds out the, the proper buyers from, you know, like the people who are just sort of, I guess, opportunistic. Yeah. Um, and then there's a either percentage or a flat fee, which is just like selling. It's only paid upon success. Great. So for, for anyone listening, if you wanted to engage a buyer's agent and, you know, it didn't work out, most agreements will actually have a seven day clause where you can actually, you know, go, look, it's not working out. 
it's, you know, you weren't as good as you said you were. Yeah. We're not really happy with your services. So it, it just like selling, you, we're only paid upon success. So we're incentivized to get you a great result on budget yeah. every time. Yeah, nice. And I think that's where the buyer's agent, people kind of balk at the fees and I'm going, well, it's actually your insurance protection to stop. If you waited eight weeks sometimes to find the right property or you missed out on the property that you really wanted, now that property values have gone up, you're outpacing, it's, your market's outpaced your ability to save, isn't it? The, I, I always say to my clients, like, it's it's what takes you three months will take me three weeks. Yeah. And and especially- and sometimes it happens too quickly that, that this is too good to be true. Correct. So it's like, be careful what you wish for because a buyer's agent can make it happen faster than you can and you're going to freak out. <laughs> 12 hours is the record. So. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's one of those things where um, most people, like let, let's take our, our area for example, yeah. right? Like most people will come down. They'll look for probably two or three months, get a feel for the area, figure out where they want to live. Yeah. Then they'll probably go, okay, cool, we're confident to put some offers on a property. They'll miss out. Yeah. And then usually after that, usually about at that three month park mark, then they come to me. With some, I've had a couple who were just contacting me the other day and they're like, look, we're definitely moving down here. We've been looking around. Um, and I've got them on a mission this weekend to not look at properties, but actually go and check out where they want to live. So not even looking at properties, we're talking schools, cafes, beaches. That'll take them a long time and we can squash that down into maybe a weekend and then I, I'm confident that we can probably get them something in three weeks' time if, if they've got a good brief. Yeah. It's wonderful, mate. Uh, any other tips for people that are looking? Uh, um, I think for being an agent, I think whilst it's a competitive market, don't don't play games with the agents. Mm-hmm. Be be very be very concise. Be very you know be very upfront. Um, I th- I've seen a lot of people miss out on properties trying to trying to win. If that makes yeah. sense, there is wins in this market, but it is competitive, right? So so you know work with your agent, yeah. not against them. Yeah. yeah, that's it. They're they're doing their best for the vendor, and and, and I always I always think too like remember that they work for the vendor too. So yeah, and if they're selling your property, you want them to work as hard as they are at the moment. One hundred percent, yeah. And the ones that are too helpful, well, maybe then you might not sell with them later on. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, work work with the agents um, and just remember who they work for because yeah. I've seen a lot of people come back, you know, maybe disgruntled, but in the end, they're just doing the best for their vendor, who in the end pays their fee. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Beautiful, Jack. Thanks so much. I know. Look, on a personal note, you've been super helpful uh, here from a listener point of view. I know that you've kind of heaps of gold that you, you've kind of shared with us, mate. So thank you so much. If you found this episode helpful, um, drop us a note, drop us a, a message to say it's helpful, give us, a, um, give us a thumbs up as well. But Jack, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me, mate. Pleasure, thank mate. You.